Hi guys, and welcome back to Life Sweet Journey. So today's video is actually Sam's RV. Last year, we had the chance to go to Big Sky, Montana for a ski trip, but while we were there, we did one day of an excursion to snowmobile in Yellowstone. And Babe and I had actually been to Yellowstone in the summer, maybe a year or two before that. Beautiful, we loved Yellowstone. We've also been snowmobiling in the past, love snowmobiling as well, but we were not sure if snowmobiling in Yellowstone would be worth it. So this video actually answers that question. If you're wondering for yourself if going on a winter tour through Yellowstone is worth it, if you've already been, as well as a few of the things you need to know if you've never snowmobiled Yellowstone before. So come along for the journey. So here we are gearing up to go in, ready to go. And it is worth noting that we ended up saying yes to the trip because no one else in our group had ever even been to Yellowstone, whether it was summer or winter. So it was a great chance for them to experience the park. If it hadn't been for everyone else wanting to go, I don't think Babe and I would have ever done it on our own, but I will say I'm glad we did. Winter is completely different from summer in Yellowstone. Now, do I think the price difference is worth it? We'll get to that. But we did learn a lot that was different from what we learned in the summer and what we saw in the summer as well. You won't see, uh, but they are basically steam vents that's shooting hot steam about 200, 240 degrees out. Um, mud pots here. Uh, these are my favorite five geothermal feature by far. That 40 mile diameter stretch of the caldera. Okay. So magma sits closer here than anywhere else in the Earth's park. So these rivers don't freeze over. Ah, oh, cool. Heads up, guys. Now, let's chat getting into the park. You can take your own snowmobile like that guy, but it's really hard to navigate the park if you don't know it well. Roads are closed, certain parts of the park are closed. So in that sense, it does pay to be with a tour guide. The park is open to the public around mid-December to mid-March for winter. So you do have a good four months that you can go and explore and you cannot enter with a car. You have to have an over the snow vehicle. Obviously, we don't own snowmobiles, so a tour was really our only option because we did not feel confident running a snowmobile and <laughs> trying to navigate our way through Yellowstone in the snow. So definitely pro for booking a tour. Plus, your tour guide will know how to navigate easily around without scaring the locals. Hi. Hello. Hi, little friend. You're so cute. Hi. Bye. Um, these are all females that are calves. Males Hi. by themselves are very small groups by themselves up the winter. The only time they really join the herd is in the summertime for mating. For the, the part you've been waiting for, is it worth it? In my opinion, it is still really expensive. We don't tend to do excursions when we go on ski trips because skiing itself is already pretty expensive. But on the flip side, how often are you going to be near Yellowstone in the winter? So it can often be a once in a lifetime experience. And for that, it makes it worth it. If you've been in the summer, winter in Yellowstone is completely different. It's an entirely different world. We got to go to places we didn't see in the summer. And also you kind of have the park to yourself. If you have been to Yellowstone in the summer, you know that it's pretty crowded. That is not the case in the winter. You kind of have the run of the place. Also, seeing the wildlife in winter, the bison, watching them kind of frolic in the snow is really, really cool. So for that, also worth it for what you see. But you are going to be dropping 
about $400, no matter which tour you book with. We went with two top Yellowstone tours and we really loved them. They were great. But really, no matter which tour group you pick, you're looking at spending just a little under $400. It does save you by doing double rider because really you're paying for the cost of the snowmobile. But at least with two top, it was $320 for single rider. 360, 350, 360 for double rider because you are needing to pay the fees for each person and then it does include a lunch. It does not include your cost of entry into the park. If you have a national park pass like we did, that gets you into the park. But if you do not have a park pass, you have to pay an additional, I think, $20 on top of your tour rate. Also not included in your tour rate and it is customary to tip your guide because it is a service industry. So depending on how much of a tip you leave, that's going to also factor into how much you pay. Also, there is one stop on the tour where you can get off the snowmobile, go in the warming hut, get some coffee, some hot cocoa, some snackies. But again, that's an additional charge. And if you want to enjoy those things, you need to bring either a credit card with you or some cash. So make sure you have that on you. But no matter which way you slice it, you're looking at paying anywhere from $200 to $400 per person. And I know that that's a huge discrepancy, but it really does pay or save you to do double rider. However, if you really break it out into the amount of time you're in the park, which is a good chunk of the day. I think it's like seven, eight hours. So if you break that out by hour and then take in to account everything that you get to see and experience, it's worth it. At least once in your life. Seeing Yellowstone in the winter is pretty incredible. So yeah, I guess it's worth it. Just a few more things to know. Obviously, dress warm. It's gonna be cold, especially when the snowmobile is moving. You can pay an, a small additional fee to rent a suit through the tour group, but we didn't do that. We had our ski clothes and I wore long underwear, all of those things, and I was warm enough. It was perfectly fine. I didn't feel like I had needed to rent the snowsuit thing. Plus, your, you have hand warmer things on the snowmobiles, and at least with two top, we had heated seats. At least, I know the passenger did. Can't remember about the driver, but we were warm enough in our ski clothes. If you have been snowmobiling before, you know that that can be expensive either way. This is a little more expensive than a normal snowmobiling experience, but it's also different in the fact that this is a tour and you're out for the majority of the day, but it is not an adrenaline snowmobile experience. So if you've done an experience before where you've gotten a chance to like play on the snowmobile, run it wide open as fast as you're willing to go, you do not get to do that on this trip. There's no chance for that. Because Yellowstone is a national park, there's a pretty strict speed limit that the snowmobiles have to stick to. One for the wildlife, it's, it's just the rules. So while it does go fast, you're on a snowmobile. I wanna say it went at most 30 miles per hour. Um, and there was really only one time where we were really kind of like shoo going when we were headed back into town. But just know if you're used to adrenaline seeking snowmobile experiences, don't expect that with this tour. Also, be prepared for it to stink a little bit. One, you have the exhaust coming from the snowmobiles and Yellowstone's a little stinky. All the geysers smell like sulfur, or a lot of them do, not all of them, but just be prepared for it to be a little stinky. Thankfully, your mask with the snowmobile, when that's going, you won't really smell a lot of the exhaust. But just know, if you're sensitive to smell, Yellowstone's got some sense. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and enjoy the journey, everybody. We told you not to fart.
If you found this video helpful, we would love it if you would give it a big thumbs up and click subscribe. Thanks.